You won't hear about this anywhere in the mainstream media, but scheming Sturgeon's independence dream fell apart on a catastrophic US tour this week. The Scottish First Minister expected to be welcomed in Washington, D.C. as some sort of liberal hero. Instead, she's made her plans for a futile Indy Ref 2 look foolish. Uh, she's been criticised for undermining NATO. And she unnecessarily waded into U.S. electoral politics with a petty and immature dig at Donald Trump. In fact, her grandstanding, quote, selfie tour has made dopey London Mayor Sadiq Khan's cannabis tour of California last week look Churchillian by comparison. Before Sturgeon had even stepped off the plane to speak at the Brookings Institute, a senior fellow from that very organisation had slammed her blatant politicising at a time of war in Europe. Michael O'Hanlon told The Herald on Sunday that Sturgeon's plans to hold a second referendum by the end of next year were, quote, weird and the timing was wrong, given it, quote, might appear to weaken the alliance at a time when we need to protect strength and resolve. Meanwhile, her trip has sparked an SNP civil war over NATO. In her speech, Sturgeon said Putin's Ukraine invasion had strengthened her conviction that Scotland should join NATO post-independence. We are clearer than ever that membership of NATO would not only be vital to Scotland's security, uh, although it would most certainly be that, it would also be the principal way in which an independent Scotland in an interdependent world would contribute to the collective security of our neighbours and allies. But despite those comments, her divided party a party which, by the way, uh, ridiculously wants to scrap Trident, despite opposition from the US government and the Scottish people. But her party aren't with her. I mean, the SNP's youth wing continues to oppose NATO membership big time. Sturgeon has also sparked a feud with her coalition partner, with the Scottish Greens co-leader Patrick Harvey stating on the record after Sturgeon's speech they remain opposed to Scotland being part of NATO. Meanwhile... Sturgeon is also at odds with the US government about what exactly was discussed during her visit. The First Minister claims she talked about the, quote, constitutional future of the UK during a meeting with the US Deputy of State, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman in Washington. But the US government made no mention of the issue in its official statement, which said the two women simply discussed Russian President Vladimir Putin's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine, as well as Scotland's support of COP26. Intriguingly, the same thing happened when Sturgeon met US Speaker Nancy Pelosi and claimed she had discussed, quote, Scotland's future, even though the US politician didn't reference it in her post-meeting readout. But when all else fails, Sturgeon jumps on the Trump-bashing bandwagon in a highly unprofessional move that broke all convention Sturgeon was asked at the Brookings Institute what policies the US could adopt to better assist European energy security. She replied this way. What policies can the United States adopt, adopt to better assist European energy security? What can we do to help you all out? Don't re-elect Trump at any point. <laughs> Don't re-elect Trump at any point. <laughs> <laughs> is, is she a lefty student politician trying to show off or is she a credible international leader? No wonder Scottish Tory constitution spokesman Donald Cameron raged, Scottish taxpayers are sick and tired of watching their hard-earned cash being spent on PR, photo ops and promoting an independence referendum that poll after poll has shown that the majority don't want. Instead of trying to convert US officials to the selfish cause of the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon should be focused on tackling her government's woeful performance here in Scotland. Scheming Sturgeon's trip was nothing more than a wasteful bid to draw attention to her futile independence cause on the international stage. And she's even trying to use the US government to do so. But it failed spectacularly, which is why the rest of the media have decided not to talk about it. After all, they must not embarrass Queen Nick.